everybody. Welcome to Annoying Animals Storytime. I'm glad to see you all here today. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so. Then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. All right, today we are reading one of my favorite books of all time. You've probably heard of it before, but you can't get enough of it, Mother Bruce. And Mother's Day is coming up, that's why I chose Mother Goose. There are also some annoying animals in this story. And thank you so much to Ryan Higgins, the author and illustrator. I'm always so impressed when one person writes the book and does the pictures and does a super funny book. Ryan Higgins, thank you to him for letting us read his books on story times. All right, Mother, it says Mother Goose and then Goose is crossed out and it says Bruce instead. So. I wonder what is going to happen in this story. He doesn't look super happy, does he? Mother Bruce. All right. There's Mother Bruce's house in the forest. Oh, yeah. And I like to read what the author says at the beginning. It says, Bruce's dinner recipe calls for eggs. But when the eggs call back, this grumpy bear is in for an unwelcome surprise. All right, I like reading those little descriptions at the beginning to see what the story's about. Gives a little hint. And then Ryan Higgins says, this book is for Griffin, the silliest goose I know. So I wonder who Griffin is. Maybe his son, grandson, nephew? I don't know. Here's Bruce. Bruce was a bear who lived all by himself. He was a grump. He did not like sunny days. He did not like the rain. He did not like cute little animals. Wow, well, you have to be pretty grumpy not to like cute little animals. Bruce only liked one thing eggs. He collected them from all over the forest. Good morning, Mrs. Sparrow, he says. See his basket of eggs. But Bruce didn't eat eggs raw like other bears. Instead, he cooked them into fancy recipes that he found on the internet. Fancy recipes for eggs. One day, Bruce came across a recipe for hard-boiled eggs with honey salmon sauce. Ooh, there he's thinking about it. So he went out to get all the ingredients. And look, he's got a grocery cart, but is he going to the grocery store? I don't think so. First, he caught a few salmon. Then he collected honey from a local beehive because he likes to support local businesses. Last, he went to Mrs. Goose's nest to pay her a visit. And he says to her, are these eggs free range and organic? At home, Bruce prepared the eggs for hard boiling. But no sooner had he got them on the stove, than his fire went out. So he went to get more wood. When Bruce came back, he was met with an unwelcome surprise. I wonder what it's going to be. <gasps> Mama! What happened? The eggs hatched. Bruce became the victim of mistaken identity. Bruce wanted hard-boiled eggs, not goslings. Goslings are baby geese. He supposed he could settle for some buttered goslings on toast, but for some reason he lost his appetite.
Bruce scooped up the little geese and stomped back to their nest. I will have to ask Mrs. Goose about her return policy. But when he got back to the nest, he found that Mrs. Goose had flown south early. There's a note she left behind. Be back in April, he said. Bruce left the goslings there anyway, and he went back home. Do you think that's the end of the story? I don't think so. What's going to happen? Uh-oh. Mama? Mama? But he was followed. Bruce was very stern and said things like, Go away! And, I am not your mother! And, I liked you better when you were eggs. And roar! Do they look scared though? I don't know. Bruce could take it no longer. He became extra grumpy with them. But look at, they don't, they're not really bothered. It didn't work. Goslings always follow their mother. They just have an instinct to follow whoever they think is their mother. Even if she is a he and he is a bear. Mama. Bruce was stuck with them. He tried to make the best of it. It's always a good idea. Might as well make the best of it. It was hard work keeping those little babies entertained. Blech, yuck, ew. He doesn't like what he makes them. They don't like what he makes them. Oh, and he's exhausted from taking care of all these little babies. Annoying baby geese, Arrow. Stubborn teenage geese, Arrow. As the seasons passed, Bruce watched the pesky goslings grow older. Teenagers, boring adult geese. Then one fall afternoon, he saw other goose families flying south for the winter. Finally, he'd be rid of these geese and he could take a long winter nap. I wonder if that's what's gonna happen though. Bruce explained migration to the geese, but they didn't listen. Instead, they just got ready for winter. Bruce needed the geese to leave, so he got creative. Slingshot. I don't know, that'll work. What else is he going to try? Nothing worked. Model airplanes. The geese would not leave Bruce. Sigh. Oh dear, what is he going to do? So Bruce decided to pack some bags and take his geese into town. I hmm, wonder what he's doing. They boarded a bus. Hmm. And migrated down south to Miami all together. Now, every winter, Bruce and his geese head south all together. They laze about at the beach in tacky shirts, sipping ice cold lemonade while Bruce dreams of new recipes. Recipes that don't hatch. Mama? Uh oh. A baby turtle thinks one of the goslings is his mom. Isn't that a terrific story? That is just one of my favorite picture books of all time. All right, before we do an annoying animal felt board story, I thought we'd sing a little song about goslings, baby geese. And you probably all know the song about Tiny Tim the turtle, and we usually do sign language for turtle, which is like this and a shell on top. That's sign language for turtle. Well, sign language for gosling is like this. It's kind of like you have a baby and then a beak. So gosling, can you do that with me? Gosling. All right, 
Tiny Tim as a gosling. I had a little gosling, his name was Tiny Tim. I put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. Well, he drank up all the water, he ate up all the soap. Now he's homesick in bed with bubbles in his throat. Bubble, 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 pop. Bubble, 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 pop. One more time. I had a little gosling. His name was Tiny Tim. I put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. Well, he drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. Now he's homesick in bed with bubbles in his throat. Bubble, 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 pop. Bubble, 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 pop. Good job, everybody. That's a great song. We just changed it a bit to be about goslings instead of turtles. All right, are you ready for a felt story? Here we go. Here's a story called Peace and Quiet. And it's an old, old story. It's been around forever, but it's just a terrific story. And it's about an old man. And the old man lived all alone by himself in a tiny, tiny house. But every time he went to sleep at night, because the house was so old, it was noisy. The doors creaked, the floorboard squeaked, the windows rattled all night long, and he could hardly get a wink of sleep. So he decided to go and see the wise old woman in town and ask her advice. And he went to see the wise old woman and he said, wise old woman, what can I do? I can hardly get any sleep. I find my house so noisy. What do you advise? And the old woman said, well, I know that you live on a farm. Uh, do you have any chickens on your farm? And the old man said, I have lots of chickens. And she said, my advice to you is to go home, get one of your chickens and bring it in the house. So the old man went back home, went out into his fields and got one of his chickens, brought his chicken into the house. Then that night, he went to bed and tried to sleep and hoped the wise old woman's advice was going to work. He went to sleep, but see if you can say it with me. It's always the same words. All night long, the doors creaked, the floorboards squeaked, and the windows rattled. And now the chicken cackled too. The man got even less sleep that night. Oh, he was so tired in the morning and thought, that did not work. I got even less sleep than usual. So he got up and got dressed and he went to see the wise old woman again. Wise old woman, I'm not sure about your advice. I got even less sleep last night. Now there's even more noise in the house. What should I do? And she said, hmm, do you have any cows? And he said, yes, I have lots of cows on my farm. And she said, go out and get one cow and bring it into your house. So he went home and did as she said. She was wise after all. He went out into his field. Oh, and he got a cow and brought it into the house. Then that night he went to bed and tried to sleep. Well, all night long, the doors creaked, the floorboards squeaked, the windows rattled, the chicken cackled, and now the moose, the cow mooed all night long. Oh, the man got hardly any sleep at all. He spent most of the night covering his ears against all that noise. So he got up the next morning even tireder than the morning before. He got dressed and he went to see the wise old woman again. I wonder what she's gonna tell him this time. Oh, wise old woman, please help me. I need to get some sleep. Please, please help me. What should I do now? And the wise old woman said, hmm, do you have any pigs on your farm? 
And the man said, yes, I have lots of pigs. And the woman said, go out and get one pig and bring it into your house. So the little old man said, okay, I'll do as you say. So out he went out into the field, got one of his pigs and brought it into the house. That night he went to sleep again, laid down in his bed, but all night long, see if you can remember and say it with me, all night long the doors creaked, the floorboards squeaked, the windows rattled, the chicken cackled, the cow mooed, and the pig snorted. Oh, the man got no sleep at all. He sat up all night on the edge of the bed with his hands over his ears, listening to this racket and getting zero sleep. He got up in the morning, got dressed, ran over to the wise old woman and said, please, please help me. How, are, how am I supposed to live with getting no sleep at all? I can't even live my life. I can hardly do anything. I'm so tired. Please, please help me. And what does the wise old woman say? She says, do you have any horses on your farm? And he says, I know, I know what you're gonna say. Okay, one last time I'm gonna listen to your advice. So he goes home, goes out into the field, gets one of his horses and brings it in the house. Oh my goodness. All right, brings the horse in, lies down on his bed and tries to sleep again. Well, all night long, can you say it with me? The doors creaked, the floorboards squeaked, the windows rattled, the chicken cackled, the pig snorted, the cow mooed, and the horse whinnied all night long. Well, the man was at his wit's end. He got up in the morning and he thought, this is it, the very last time I'm gonna go see the wise woman for her advice. And off he went and he said, this is your last chance, wise old woman. This is the last chance I'm gonna ask you for advice. What can I do? Please help me. I think I'm gonna die. I haven't had sleep for days and days and days. And the wise old woman said, I think that you should kick all of those animals out of your house. Kick all of the animals out of the house and go to bed. He said, okay, that's the last advice I'm taking from you. So he goes home and he kicks all of the animals out of the house. Out of the house, out you go pig, out you go cow, back to the field, out you go cackling kitten, chicken. And he laid down and went to bed. Well, I wonder what's gonna happen. Well, all night long, the doors creaked, but it didn't wake the man up. The floorboards squeaked, but the man didn't wake up. The windows rattled, and the man still didn't wake up. He slept the whole night through. He got up in the morning after a good night's sleep and he said, finally, peace and quiet. So isn't that a great story? She was wise. She knew if she could teach him that things could be a lot worse and that really it's pretty darn good in your house. All right, I love that story. Okay, I think our time is up. So. Annoying animal story time is over. Have a great, happy Mother's Day. Maybe you could read Mother's, oh, Mother Bruce. Maybe you could read that story to your mother for Mother's Day, or guess what? There's an excellent little movie about Mother Bruce on Canopy on our Vancouver Island Regional Library website. We have movies on a Canopy, on Canopy software and you just make up an account and for free you can see all sorts of wonderful kids stories animated and the Mother Bruce one is excellent. So I really uh, advise you to check that one out. All right, time for a goodbye song. Story time has reached its end. I'll say goodbye to all my friends. We've read some books and had some fun. Feels like we have just begun. Story time is over, friends. We have really reached.
watch the end. Goodbye, everyone. Watch our story times every Monday at 10.30. Bye for now.